Speaking as an online instructor carries a lot of responsibility. This presentation discusses those that relate to course management. Let's look at some of the things you can do to help your online classroom run smoothly once it gets underway. A well-organized online classroom will generally save students from unnecessary frustration. For example, you can encourage students to change the subject lines in the discussion forum to keep discussions organized, and you should model that behavior. If a response will be of special interest to specific individuals, use the subject line to draw their attention to it. Make frequently used documents accessible from anywhere in the course perhaps using the right or left navigation bar. Encourage students to use the assignment task list to monitor their own progress. I like to tell students that's the most concise and authoritative listing of their tasks throughout the course, and that they can't go wrong if they adhere to the tasks and deadlines published on that task list. As I teach a course, I use that same task list to keep track of the students' responsibilities and deadlines. It may be the single most important course management tool in the entire course. Any changes I make to the course are put in that document and announced. I treat it as a binding contract. If you are teaching for AST, you can download a spreadsheet template for the task list. Once you enter the class start date, it will auto-populate the rest of the dates and deadlines for you. Be sure to double-check for accuracy and then upload the data document to the course for your students. If you're teaching for Florida Tech or other places, you might have a Moodle installation that includes a checklist module. The advantage of the checklist module is that instructors can view student progress against the checklist. The disadvantage is that due dates don't auto-populate. Direct as much communication as possible to the Moodle site. This practice makes the information available to everyone in the class and keeps everyone more organized than they would be if course records are scattered across the internet, personal computers, and the class Moodle site. In addition, directing information to the Moodle site creates an archival record of the course in case you need to refer to it again for some reason. On a similar note, Moodle has a general announcements forum with special capabilities. For classes I set up, the settings on this forum force everyone to be subscribed via email. That way, when an instructor posts a general announcement, all course members also get an email copy of the announcement in their inbox. I prefer this because it gives me a way to the student's computer to share important information immediately. Use these announcements to let students know about anything that requires a quick turnaround. I also use this forum to let students know what's ahead in the coming week as well as provide class-wide feedback on the most recent assignments. I'm very careful to limit my use of this capability to information I consider absolutely essential. Consistency is important too. Use the procedures to set up a predictable rhythm so students know what to expect and how and when they will participate. If you do a good job setting up the protocols and patterns in your class, your students will come to rely on them in managing their personal schedules. This is understandable and appropriate. Not only will your students be happy and productive, but so will you as they busily work on course tasks instead of sending frantic emails asking you for yet another clarification. Generally, I like to make as much material as possible available to students. Moodle and other course management systems have the capability of releasing information at specific dates and closing access at specific dates. We all know that having the technology available to do something doesn't make it a good idea. With the exception of the quiz discussion forums and the final exam, we make all of the materials in a course available to all of the students right away. We know we are working with busy professionals. If they have time to get ahead a bit, we want to make sure the material is available to allow them to do that. With few exceptions, we don't believe in micromanaging their work. When you know that you will be away from normal internet access for travel or other reasons, let the students know ahead of time. You don't need to explain reasons to them, unless you want to, but you should extend them the courtesy of letting them know you'll be a little less accessible than usual. If you're taking a laptop and know that you'll have internet access when you reach your destination, you might not need to say anything. If you don't have good internet access but plan to spend some time in internet cafes or hotel business centers, let them know that you'll be less accessible than usual. If you're not going to have internet access at all, let them know they won't be able to get in touch with you until a certain date. This will save them from feeling frustrated when you can't respond. The only comments I've received from students when I make announcements like these are their wishes for my safe travel. Every now and again, instructors come across a student who is difficult to manage and crosses boundaries he or she ought not cross. This is true in face-to-face -face situations as well as online. Dealing with a difficult online student has both advantages and disadvantages. The primary disadvantage is that the online student 
student can try to contact you no matter the time of day. The primary advantage is that you have much more control of when the difficult student can get your attention and how quickly you will have to respond. In addition, an online instructor can easily save emails and instant message logs that document the interactions with that student. Here are some tips to help you deal with difficult students. Wait to respond. It's easier on you to respond with a cooler head. Waiting gives you the time to get advice from a trusted colleague, and it also conveys to the difficult student that you are not at their mercy because internet access and email access is so convenient for them. Use the technology at your disposal to ration the time and attention you give a student. For example, you can set up a rule in your email client that routes the difficult student's messages to a specific folder. Check that folder every 24 or 48 hours whatever your published policy says, and process all of the emails at once, responding to issues as appropriate. It will often be the case that you can direct the student to communicate via the discussion forum. Once their question is posted there, you or the difficult student's classmates can respond by pointing to the relevant sections of the course content. If a difficult student calls or IMs you outside of office hours, explain that you are not available now and that you can give them some time during office hours. If they persist, use caller ID to help you know when to let their call go to voicemail. Then, respond according to your policy. If possible, respond to difficult students in a way that puts the bulk of the work surrounding the interaction on them. For example, I sometimes have had online students contact me to challenge grades. Haven't we all? When that happens, I usually tell them I'm happy to consider their request for a grade change and ask them to review all of the feedback I've already given, both public and private. I also ask them to review the assignment description, the published grading guidelines, and their own work. Once they do, I ask them to get back to me letting me know on what basis they think they deserve a better grade. That's usually the end of a grade challenge. Occasionally a student will come back to me having identified a legitimate mistake on my part, and in those cases I am more than happy to correct the grade. More often, they realize that maybe their work wasn't as good as they had originally thought and that the grade was justified. When dealing with a difficult student, keep copies of all correspondence. Once you believe the problem with this student has the potential to result in a grade appeal or other academic, criminal, or civil penalty, craft all of your responses, keeping the review process at the front of your mind. Think about what your boss or the members of the university court will think when they review what you are writing. An interaction with students may come to the point where you know there is bound to be some kind of formal review. Be sure your documents can withstand that kind of scrutiny. Be proactive about dealing with the difficult student. Communicate with your department head or supervisor to let him know a problem may be brewing. You may get some needed advice or guidance that will make things easier to handle down the road. Think carefully about which aspects of this background communication should be in writing and which aspects should be face-to-face -face or over the phone. In online classes, it's easy to gather information from trusted colleagues out of sight of the student. If you become afraid of the difficult student and what he or she might do, immediately take advantage of the services of your institution to get help for this student and for yourself if you need it.